In this video, we will discuss the requirements and calculation for including specified limited company income towards the UK spouse and partner visa financial requirement. As an OISC regulated UK immigration law firm that has helped more than 4,000 partners with their UK partner visa applications, we're very well placed to discuss this. The first requirement to include specified limited company income towards the financial requirement is that the company that provides the income must be a specified limited company. Therefore, let's first clarify what we mean when we say specified limited company, because importantly, a specified limited company is not the same as a limited company. They're completely different. Not only are the requirements different, but so too is the calculation and required documentation. A specified limited company is something that is defined in the immigration rules as a limited company that is registered in the UK and the person whose income you are relying on is an employee and or director of that company and the applicant, sponsor or family members of the applicant or sponsor hold shares in the employing company and any remaining shares not including the applicant, sponsor or family members of the applicant or sponsor must be held either directly or indirectly by fewer than five other persons. I tried to stress each of these ands because all of these need to apply for the employer to be a specified limited company. For example, if the company is registered overseas, it will technically not be a specified limited company. With this being said, be prepared to explain this to the Home Office caseworker after submission, as this is a point that is sometimes overlooked by them. And you can do this by copying and pasting paragraph 9 of Appendix FMSE, which specifically states that the company must be based in the UK. If the applicant, sponsor or family members of the applicant or sponsor do not hold shares of the employing company, that company cannot be a specified limited company. If shares are held but there are more than four other persons that hold the remaining shares, it will not be a specified limited company. Furthermore, this video will be relevant for applications where the sponsor does not receive one of these permitted benefits. As we discussed in our detailed UK spouse visa requirements video, if the sponsor does receive one of these benefits, the adequate maintenance test applies, which is a much lower standard that must instead be met. If the sponsor does receive one of these, we have a detailed step-by-step -step guide on the adequate maintenance test on our website, www.migrate.org.uk. The second requirement is that the specified limited company must have had one full financial year. And this is because you'll be required to provide company related documentation, such as accounts and business bank statements specifically relating to one full financial year. If the specified limited company does not have one full financial year, the two options are normally one, rely on another source of income to satisfy the financial requirement, or two, wait until one full financial year has passed and then submit the application if the financial requirement is met. The third requirement is that the most recent full financial year should be a 12-month financial year. Whilst UK limited companies normally have a 12-month financial year, there are some cases where the company's financial year is not 12 months, particularly in the first year of trading, as the first financial year can sometimes be shorter or longer than 12 months long. If the specified limited company's most recent financial year is not 12 months, this may be problematic depending on the Home Office caseworker you're assigned, as 12 months is specifically mentioned in the Home Office guidance. Therefore, in such a case, you can 1. Ask the accountant if the accounting year can be changed to a 12-month financial year. 2. Wait until the specified limited company's most recent financial year is 12 months. Or 3. Rely on another source of permitted income to satisfy the financial requirement. Or 4. Submit the application despite the most recent financial year not being 12 months. The most important factor regarding whether this will be problematic or not will again be the Home Office caseworker that you're assigned. If the financial year is fewer than 12 months, this is less likely to be problematic. Whilst if the financial year is longer than 12 months, this is more likely going to be problematic. The next requirement that we will discuss is that there must be ongoing receipt of employment and or dividend income since the specified limited company's most recent full financial year ended. If you're not able to show that there is ongoing receipt of employment and or dividend income, for example, if the company has since been liquidated, you will not technically be able to include the income from the specified limited company. The fifth requirement is that if the company is not required to produce annual audited accounts, which is the case for the vast majority of specified limited companies, the company will need an accountant since you will also need to provide an accountant certificate of confirmation, which is something that we discuss further on our website, migrate.org.uk. 
We will now discuss how to calculate the amount of specified limited income that you can include towards the financial requirement. Firstly, it's worth noting that in approximately 99% of applications, specified limited company income is included under category F. It can also be included under category G, but since category G involves a lot more paperwork, in 99% of instances, partners can completely disregard category G. The first step to calculating specified limited company income is to identify the specified limited company's most recent full financial year that passed by looking at the CT600 company tax return document. Here is a CT600 company tax return document example. Zooming in, we can see that in this example, the financial year starts on the 1st of April and ends on the 31st of March. So using this financial year as an example, which starts on the 1st of April and ends on the 31st of March, if an application is submitted on the 30th of March, 2024, i.e. a day before the financial year ends, the relevant financial year will begin on the 1st of April, 2022 and end on the 31st of March, 2023. If, however, an application is submitted one day after the financial year ends, on the 1st of April 2024, the relevant financial year will begin on the 1st of April 2023 and end on the 31st of March 2024. So, in a lot of instances, accounts for the new financial year will need to be filed much earlier than what the UK tax rules require. The second step requires you to total the gross amount of employment income that was received in the financial year that you identified in step one. If the person also received dividend income that was declared during or in respect of the relevant financial year, that income received can also be included. So the words or in respect of means that the dividend income does not actually need to have been received during the relevant financial year. Rather, it is fine if it was received after the relevant financial year, but before the application is submitted. Since this goes against the general approach in the immigration rules, which requires the income to be received in the relevant financial period, if you choose to rely on income that was received after the relevant financial year ended, but before the application was submitted, you should make it clear to the Home Office caseworker that this is permitted by citing paragraph 90i of Appendix FMSE and by highlighting the words or in respect of. The total of the employment and dividend income, as previously discussed, is the amount that you can include towards the financial requirement under category F, if everything is evidenced correctly. So, for small business owners, it's commonly the case that the business owner takes money out of the business when and as they need it, and then lets the accountant deal with the accounts and how those payments are labelled. Since it's the accountant's job to make these payments as tax efficient as possible, we commonly see that they can be creative and label payments as something other than salary or dividends, such as the repayment of a director's loan. The amount of employment and dividend income you're relying on should be made clear in your application, as it is only these two types of income that can be included in your application. If the financial requirement is met under category F, feel free to ignore category G completely, as it involves submitting much more paperwork. While category F is based on the company's most recent full financial year, category G is based on the company's two most recent full financial years and not only requires documentation relating to two financial years, but it will also require you to calculate the mean average of the employment and dividends that was received in the two most recent full financial years. What about combining specified limited company income with other sources of income? Specified limited company income under category F can be combined with non-specified limited company employment income, other non-employment income under category C such as property rental income, and pension income under category E. However, when specified limited company income is combined with other sources of income, the relevant financial period for the other source of income generally changes to match the same period as the specified limited company income. For example, this table shows the amount of specified limited company income received. The numbers 13 to 1 here relate to the number of months before submitting the online application. The months 13 up until 2 are highlighted in orange because that is the specified limited company's most recent full financial year, and thus is the amount that can be included towards the financial requirement. Month 1 here will be irrelevant regarding the amount that can be included towards the financial requirement, as it's outside the most recent full financial year. If we total up months 13 to 2 here, this will mean that £15,000 specified limited company income can be included towards the financial requirement. For non-specified limited companies under category A, the relevant period will generally be the six months before submitting the online application. 
However, when you combine specified limited company income with non-specified limited company income, in this example, it will only be months 13 to 2, i.e. the relevant period for the specified limited company income, which are relevant when determining the amount of non-specified limited company income that can be included towards the financial requirement. And this is because when you combine specified limited company income with other sources of income, the general rule is that the relevant period changes to match the specified limited company's relevant period. An implication of this is that other specified limited companies can only be combined when the relevant financial period is the same. Specified limited company income under category F cannot be combined with cash savings and sources of income which are not still a source of income when the application is submitted. Continuing with the example of combining specified limited company income with non-specified limited company income, here you can see that the non-specified limited company income stopped becoming a source of income four months before submitting the online application. Therefore, in this instance, as the non-specified limited company employment income is not being received when the online application intends to be submitted, the non-specified limited company income cannot be included towards the financial requirement. We discussed the amount of income that you'll need to satisfy the financial requirement as well as all of the UK spouse visa requirements that you must meet in our detailed spouse visa requirements YouTube video. Also, if you found this video helpful, feel free to let us know in the YouTube comments by liking the video and by subscribing.